Hello, my name is Les Brown. Uh, today I want to talk to you about your goals and your dreams. I want you to think about something that's important to you. Maybe it's a personal goal. I know in my own personal experience, my goal was to be able to buy my mother a home. I'm adopted. And so I wanted to be able to do something special for my adopted mother. She was a domestic worker for wealthy families on Miami Beach, and she cooked for these families, and we ate the food left over from the families that she cooked for, and she kept the children, and we wore the hand-me-down clothes of the children that she kept, and you can imagine as a kid, I used to say, Mama, on the way home on the bus from Miami Beach back to Liberty City and Overtown, I said, when I become a man, I'm gonna be able to buy clothes for us and buy groceries for us, but not only that, I'm gonna buy you a big, beautiful home, just like the homes that you clean every day. And she said, Leslie, you don't have to do that. I said, I know, but I'm going to. And, and you know what? The reason that I, I said that, I believe that it was possible. See, the family that, that Mama worked for, uh, Mr. Sadursky used to listen to motivational messages every day. And I was very fortunate to have to take care of the needs of Mr. Sadursky. Had to shine his shoes and dust his office. And he was very rude to me. He said, Leslie, especially had guests, did you clean this? Yes, I did, sir. Look at it. How can you say that? I do apologize, sir. And his guests would say, don't talk to him like that. That's not nice. But the truth of the matter is, I didn't clean the office as good as I could have, <laughs> okay? And the reason I did not is because I wanted him to call me into the office so I can spend time doing it over again as I listened to the motivational messages that he listened to every day by Earl Nightingale. I can remember as if it were yesterday. We become what we think about. All of us are self-made, but only the successful will admit it. I can hear the voice of Dr. Norman Vincent Peale, who wrote The Power of Positive Thinking. Don't allow your negative thoughts to hold you back. You are greater than your circumstances. I can remember when he was listening to Zig Ziglar. If you give enough people what they want, they will give you what you want. I can remember as he is listening to Jim Rowan. When the end comes for you, let it find you conquering a new mountain, not sliding down an old one. And unbeknownst to me, those messages, they're programming my mind. And it helped me to begin to develop a mindset of possibility. I want you to think about your goals and dreams of what you want to achieve on a personal level. Mine was to buy my mother a home, to take care of her. What is your goal? What's your dream? What is something that you want to do with your life? And I can say to you, based upon my own experience, I don't even know you, that it's possible that you have the ability to do more than you can ever begin to imagine. And, and your, your mindset is crucial as you look at your goals and your dreams and having a spirit of optimism. I, I had a friend who went to New York City to apply for a job and she came back and I said, hey, how did things go? She said, I didn't get the job. I said, what happened? She said, they turned me down, but I didn't think I was going to get it anyhow. And I thought after I left her presence, but well, why did she go in the first place? <laughs> you know, she went there with a mindset that she was not going to get the job. I believe that we have an energy and a, a spirit about us that people telegraph that. But I believe that had she gone there, it's no guarantee that, hey, with a sense of expectation, I'm going to get this job. I think her preparation, her attitude, and her behavior, and her energy would have been totally different. I'm reminded of two little boys who were in Philadelphia and they were playing on some ice and they got out too far and one fell through the ice and, and, and he was thrashing, trying to get out. And obviously his friend looked at him and panicked and he couldn't reach him, he couldn't pull him out. And so he saw him going under the ice and it was very hard and he couldn't break through. And so this little frail fellow ran, he saw a tree in the distance and he scrambled up this tree and he, he broke off a big branch and came back and savagely began to beat the ice and he broke it. And miraculously, he saved his friend. And when the paramedics came, people were looking at him, he had a blanket around him, this little puny dude, about 12 years old. And, and people start asking the question as they looked at him and they looked at the branch, how could this little small fellow 
break this branch off and, and beat this ice and break it and save his friend. How, how could he have done that, as small as he was? And, and as they were scratching their heads, a, a gentleman who was there said, I can tell you how he did it. And everybody said, how? And he said, there was no one here to tell him that he couldn't do it. See, a lot of people are not really living their dreams and living the kind of life that they are capable of living because of the fact that they have been inundated with so many negative conversations. Have you ever had a goal and dream of something you wanted to achieve and you shared it with people that you love and thought they would be excited for you and they said to you, you can't do that. You know, MIT did a study and the study indicated if I tell you, you can't do that, somebody else has to come along and say, you can do it. You can do it. Don't listen to him, Ruby. You can do it. John, don't listen to Les. You can do it. They have to say that 17 times before they can neutralize that one time. That's why my favorite book says, faith comes by hearing and hearing and hearing. And so by listening to those motivational messages, every day when my mother went to do domestic work on Miami Beach, it began to give me a sense of optimism, of the possibilities of the kind of life that I can live. And I'm saying to you, as you listen on a regular basis, as you begin to program your mind deliberately, the reason that most people don't achieve their goals is because they are thinking like everybody else. 16 revolutionary words, be ye not conformed to this world, be ye transformed by the renewing of your mind. That's an ongoing process. What are your goals? What are your dreams? Earl Nightingale was right. You don't get in life what you want, you get in life what you are. And so you want to take the time every day to listen to things that can help to program your mind positively because at the end of the day, if you don't program your mind, it's going to be programmed. Trust me, it's going to be bombarded with all kind of head trash, commercials. I was at a service station pumping gas and a commercial came up. I mean, you get on the elevator and commercials are there. You look at billboards, their messages is coming in, over 5,000, 10,000 messages on a regular basis. And so as you look at your goals and dreams, it's very important that you are intentional about controlling what goes on in your mind because everything gets in through the eyes and through the ears. So, what do you want? What do you want for yourself? What I'm doing right now? I didn't do it for 14 years. You know why? Because I was suffering from possibility blindness. Have you thought about doing something and you, you looked at what you wanted to do and your heart said, I could do that. And then your mind asked, how? And then you start thinking, well, I can't do that. I don't have a college education. I can't do that. I don't have an MBA or a PhD. I can't do that. I've never worked for a major corporation. Why would corporations reach over people with PhDs and MBAs and years of experience and pay me to come in to do something I've never done? I thought about doing this for years and I talked myself out of it. There's an African proverb that says, if there's no enemy within, the enemy outside can do us no harm. Shakespeare says the four dear Brutus, it's not in our stars, but in ourselves that we are underlings. And so as you look at yourself and look at your goals and look at your dreams, I'm saying to you that it's possible because if anybody at any point in time had a goal, had a dream of what they wanted to achieve and they made it happen, then it's possible you can do it too. But you've got to be intentional about programming your mind. So here's some things that's very important. I want you to hold in mind what it is you want to do in your personal life. What is it that you'd like to do? Maybe you want to do something for someone you care about. That was the goal and dream that I had. And I, I purchased four different homes for my mother. And I want you to think about your financial goal. You know, people say money won't make you happy, but everybody want to fight out for themselves. <laughs> I have a friend named Rita Davenport, and Rita said, uh, you know, money can't make you happy, you know, but it's right up there with oxygen. <laughs>
agree with that 100%. So as you look at your goals and dreams, I want you to think about your financial freedom number. What does that look like? That once you achieve that, it will alleviate a lot of stress. Once you achieve that, that you have more time for yourself and for your family. You can go on that dream vacation you've been thinking about or buy that dream car or home that you desire. Once you earn that amount of money, it would be like becoming debt free. I want you to think about your financial freedom number. And then once you come up with that number, and I want you to write it down, as you come up with that number, I want you to multiply it 100 times. Yes, a hundred times. Read my lips, a hundred times. Why? Because I found that most people fail in life, not because they aim too high and miss, no. Most people fail in life because they do what I did for a major part of my life, aim too low and hit. And most people don't aim at all. That's why this is saying that if you don't know where you're going, you're gonna end up someplace else. And so if you are serious about your goals and dreams, I can say to you that you've got to affirm yourself, you've got to tell yourself, you've got to encourage yourself that it's possible, that you've got to talk to yourself on a regular basis. I I'll never forget, I had to speak in the Georgia Dome for a friend of mine, Dexter Yeager. And Dexter Yeager is a, a multi-millionaire. He makes over a million dollars every 17 hours in this organization that I spoke for. And he invited me to be his guest speaker, the headliner, before 80,000 people in the Georgia Dome. I panic. And the first thing happens when I become afraid, I have to go to the bathroom. <laughs> so I went to the bathroom and they came knocking on the door less. The band is stalling. You need to come out. And I said, okay, 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 okay. And I was talking to myself saying, I can do this, I can do this. My mind went blank because I became overwhelmed when I peeped out front and saw 80,000 people in this stadium. It was the largest gathering I'd ever seen like this. I've seen it for sporting events, but for a speaking event, I'd never been in that kind of environment before. The most people I've ever spoken before up to that time was maybe about 500 or maybe 1,000, but 85,000, I went to the bathroom seven times. <laughs> because seven is my favorite number. You know, I'm one of seven kids. My social security number is 267. My phone number is 702. Did I tell you my favorite number is seven? God made the world in seven days. Naaman dipped himself in the River Jordan seven times. Joshua marched around the walls of Jericho seven times. Did I tell you I went to the bathroom seven times because seven is my favorite number? Well, finally, they got Mike Williams, my mentor, and he came and he knocked on the door of this portable restroom. He said, Brownie. And I said, yes. He said, come out. I said, Mike, I'm scared, I can't think. He said, are you afraid? Admit it. I said, yes, I am. I'm nervous. I, I just can't do it, Mike, I'm, I'm scared. He said, Brownie? I said, yes. He said, are you listening to me? I said, yes. He said, they came to see you. You didn't come to see them. You got this, Brownie. You can do this. Wow, let me tell you what he did. One of the things I do is train speakers how to change lives. What he did was he distracted me. I was caught up in how big the crowd was. I was caught up with saying, what can I say to them? I was breathing hard. I was feeling overwhelmed being in that setting. And when he spoke, I knew that he believed in me. When he spoke, it's like he saw me on stage speaking and, and he convinced me that I could do it. See, sometimes, it's very important for you to hear this, sometimes you have to believe in somebody's belief in you until your belief kicks in. And so when I looked at myself and I looked at where I was, what I said to myself, Mike believes in me. He believes that I can do this. And I'm saying to you, as you look at your goals and look at your dreams, 
One of the things that's important in maintaining a, an achievement-driven mindset and a spirit of optimism is having someone in your corner, having someone who believes in you, having someone who can see what you can't see. See, sometimes you can't see the picture when you're in the frame. That's why it's very important for us to have coaches, people who can encourage us, who can inspire us. You know, Muhammad Ali said, I'm the greatest, but he never won a championship without Angelo Dundee in his corner. People say that Michael Jordan, one of the greatest basketball players of all times, but he never won a championship without Phil Jackson as his coach. And so as you work on yourself and work on your dreams, I'm suggesting that you get someone in your life that you can partner with, someone that can see what you can't see, someone that when you feel you can't make it, someone when you feel I can't do this and they can give you a word of encouragement and will make all the difference in the world. And I finally came out, <laughs> I came out. And as we were walking toward the stage, I stopped and I said, will y'all pray for me? <laughs> and they did and I grabbed Dexter's hand and put it on my head, I don't know why I did that, <laughs> okay. And I finally went up and I did it. And the speech was called, it's not over until I win. And what I really meant about that, it's not over until you win over that inner conversation that you have with yourself. See, there's some things that you can do that you don't know right now. And just because you can't see it doesn't mean that it's not available to you. My favorite book says, eye has not seen, ear has not heard, nor has entered the heart of mankind what God has in store for you. There's some things that you can do that the heart can feel it, can experience it, but the mind can't get itself wrapped around it. And that's why I'm saying, what are your goals? What are your personal goals? What are your financial goals? And what's your social contribution? I believe we live in the greatest country in the world that gives us an opportunity to leave a legacy. Hart's man said, we should be ashamed to die until we've made some major contribution to humankind. One of the goals I have as a 17-year cancer conqueror is to let people know you are more powerful than cancer. One of the goals I have is, is to reduce the number of women who die from breast cancer. My mother was a 22-year breast cancer conqueror. One of the goals I have is to teach people, everyday average people outside of the church and outside of politics, both of which I believe polarize and divide people, but ordinary people who want to live an extraordinary life, how to use their story, how to use their voice to make a difference or use their knowledge to, to create a financial empire for themselves. What's your goal? What's your dream? What will your legacy be? At the end of the day, when you leave here, what are three things that you want said about you when you check out? Because we're gonna all go. Nobody's figured out how to get out of life alive. <laughs> you know, a lot of people go through life not attempting to do anything big or major with their lives because they are trying to play it safe. Hello, listen to me. Hello, there's no safe position in life. Hello, there's no safe position. You can't get out of here alive. You're gonna die anyhow. And people who believe that it's possible that they can have their dreams these are people that are daring. Helen Keller said life is either a daring adventure or it's boring. Decide that you're going to make your life a daring adventure. Decide to become a risk taker. Viscott said if you're not willing to risk, you cannot grow. And if you cannot grow, you cannot become your best. And if you can't become your best, you can't be happy. And if you can't be happy, then what else? is there. Listen, I don't know you, but here's what I know about you based upon my own experience. You have something special. You have greatness within you. I don't care if you are going through some tough times right now. You are greater than your circumstances. What you are growing through, not going through, what you are growing through will help you to become a better person. The periods in life when you have to realize that you have to come to a place within yourself where you say, I'm not going out like this. I'm not going out like this. You've got to get to a place where you say, I've had it. 
I was working on a job and they didn't like me and I didn't like them. They, they paid me just enough to keep me from quitting and I worked just hard enough to keep from getting fired. <laughs> Okay. It was a contract of, of mediocrity. And, and I got to the point, and this is when people change their lives. I got to a point where I said, hey, I've had it. I'm out of here. Where are you going? I don't know, but I'm out of here. You're about to make me lose my mind. Up in here, up in here. You're about to make me act a fool. <laughs> up in here, up in here. Come on. I can say to you, as you look at yourself, look at your goals, look at your dreams, what do you want to do with your life? It's possible. If anybody at any point in time in history had a goal, had a dream, and made it happen, then it's possible that you can have your goal. It's possible that you can have your dream. And as you look at yourself, work on yourself every day. Well, Les, what about those negative thoughts? You can't kill them, they're like little weeds. They, they keep on coming back. You can't kill weeds. They, they grow through the cracks of sidewalks. And, and so you can overpower those negative voices by listening to motivational programs, by tuning in on a regular basis to hear my voice, by reading 10 to 15 pages of, of something positive every day, by going to seminars and workshops and, and mesmerizing yourself with material that can help you to begin to get a different vision of yourself, to change your whole approach of how you see life. And it will help you to get to that next level. It'll help you to get unstuck. And how does that happen, Les? It's a process. I, I wish I could just tell you, all you have to do is just think positive and be enthusiastic and everything is going to work out all right. No, no. You can have a positive mental attitude and life will put some knots on your head. <laughs> You know, Forrest Gump said, life is like a box of chocolates. You never know what you are going to get. When you have goals and dreams, think it not strange that you face the fiery furnaces of this world. You will, not you might, you will have tribulations. But in the midst of it all, you've got to believe it's possible. It's possible. A friend of mine, he was, he was facing a life-threatening disease, Dennis said, and he fell. It was possible, even though his body was wrecked with pain, even though he was diagnosed with cancer at 18, even though the doctors called his family in and said he's not going to make it. He held on because he believed it was possible that he was not just a statistic. It was possible that if he had the faith, if he had the drive, if he had the determination, he could come through this. He said to himself, this too shall pass. And so, it's possible. You can live your dreams, and you have to work at that. It's a moment-to-moment -moment effort that you have to work to train your mind to serve you. You know, the Temptations had a song years ago, just by imagination, running away with me. In the absence of information, our imagination will run away with us, tell us that we can't do things. Uh, we begin to panic and we make decisions based upon our fears as opposed to our faith. You know, Zig Ziglar said the fear is false evidence appearing real. Faith is finding answers in the heart. Where your heart is, there your treasure is also. What do you love? What turns you on? What do you really want in your life, for your life? How do you want to show up in the world? How do you want to use this gift called life? It's been said that life is, is God's gift to us and how we live our lives is our gift to God. Whatever your goals are, your personal goal, your financial goal, or this social contribution, your legacy, your mark, what you think about it. And here's what I know, that it's possible. Here's what I know, that if you think about it, what you think about, you bring about. If you're willing to put in the work, it's possible. If you continue to encourage yourself, 
continue to fall forward. I've got a saying, when life knocks you down, try and land on your back because if you can look up, you can get up. You have something special. You have greatness within you. Your dream is possible. That's my story, and I'm sticking to it. Hello, how are you? It's great to be back with you once again. You know, as we begin to think about goals and dreams, Paul and I are going to cause you to look at and revisit a variety of things that we talk about. Why? Because faith comes by hearing and hearing and hearing and different ways and different approaches and different strategies to get underneath the stuff that's been put on us by life. And I want you really right now, once again, to start thinking about your goals and about your dreams. And as you begin to envision them, one of the things that I think that's very important that we have to always go back to, as you look at your goals and dreams, and, and I want you to expand them, and, and it's very important to realize that I, I found that most people fail in life, not because they aim too high and miss. Most people fail in life because they did just like I did for so many years. They aimed too low and hit. They didn't believe in themselves. So I want you right now, as we begin to think about the lessons and all the things that you've experienced and all of the comments and stories and strategies and lessons that you've had, I think it's time to revisit and look at your goals and dreams and let's raise the bar. I remember as a kid, we would be in the backyard and, and we would play jump and somebody would get on one side of the stick, my sister and then my brother, we would run and we'd jump over it. And then they say, raise it up a little bit higher. We have to back up and we run and we'd jump over it again. And then we say, raise it up a little higher. And the higher it, it got, we have to begin to change our approach and how we're going to get over the bar. And that's the same thing in life. And so right now, I want you to think about your goals and dreams as you begin to raise them a little higher. And I want you to say with me, it's possible. It's possible. You know, the easiest thing that I do is speak and train people how to speak. Go into prisons and juvenile detention centers and to high schools and colleges. Speak before thousands of people. I can do that in my sleep. Let me share with you the, the most difficult thing I've ever done in my life, and it took me years to do, and that was to believe that it was possible, to believe that I can do it. Given my circumstances, born in an abandoned building on a floor, being adopted, being labeled educable, mentally retarded, failing twice in school, no college training, never worked for a major corporation, to believe that I had something of value to say that somebody would want to listen to me, to believe that, that somebody would pay me to talk to them. H have you ever thought about something you wanted to do and, and you talk yourself out of it? I, I, I remember going to see Zig Ziglar, who I consider the number one motivational speaker on the planet, and Dr. Norman Vincent Peale when he was alive, and Robert Schuller. I, I, I used to see them and I would be so pumped up and inspired after hearing Jim Rohn, who recently passed, one of the great motivational speakers of all time, and, and Charlie Tremendous Jones, and, and I, I would go to my car pumped up, saying, yes, 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 I can. And then after a while, my mental conditioning would kick in. And I would say, Les Brown, you can't do that. You don't have a college education. Les Brown. You can't do that. You don't even know who your parents are. Les Brown, you can't do that. You failed twice in school. Come on. You ever thought about something you wanted to do and, and you talk yourself out of it? There's a proverb that says, if there's no enemy within, the enemy outside can do us no harm. That's why it's important that you make it a point every day to listen to Paul, to listen to me, to review these lessons, to, to get them deep, not only in the conscious mind, but the subconscious mind, and get them in your spirit. Well, how often should I do it? Do it until you are producing the results. That's how often you should do it. And, and you never stop, because once you stop, that's when those negative thoughts will come back. Once you stop, that's when you will begin to doubt yourself. Once you stop, I'm telling you what I know. 
Yes. Every day, it's a selling job on you. It's possible. I can do this. I can make this happen. No matter how bad it is or how bad it gets, I'm going to make it. It's possible. Yes, your dream is possible. Say that to yourself every day. Feed your mind with words that you write and words that you hear and words that you speak to yourself. Feed your faith and your doubts will starve to death. Say to yourself, it's possible. It's possible. It's possible. Even when you have no evidence to point to, say to yourself, it's possible. There's nothing as powerful as a made-up mind. It's a struggle sometimes to do that, especially when you have people around you telling you that it's not possible, that you can't do it. And they're constantly pointing out your failures of the past, constantly reminding you of all of the things that you don't have going for you. I'm reminded of, of a story of, of two little boys that were playing on, on some ice during the winter. And, and, and as they got further out on this ice, one fell through the, the thin ice. And, and so the little fellow that was still on top of the, the ice, he was trying to save his, his little buddy. And he couldn't reach him. He was trying to pull him. He could see him through the thin ice as he got further away from him, struggling. And, and he couldn't reach him, and he's trying to break the ice, and he couldn't do it. And he looked around, and he saw a tree in the distance, and he ran, and, and he got up on the tree, and, 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 and he pulled and broke down an enormous-sized branch and came back and, and savagely began to beat that ice and broke it. And, and miraculously, he saved his friend. And when the paramedics came, and they were able to revive this little boy, they were scratching their heads, they're trying to figure this out, said, how, how could this little pruny fellow go up in a tree and break off a branch this size and then come back and beat and break the ice and save his friend? They thought it was just miraculous, it was baffling. And an old guy who was there said, I can tell you how he did it. And they said, how? How did he do it? And he said, there was no one here to tell him that he couldn't do it. Whoa. What could you do? What could I do? What could all of us do if we did not have the naysayers in our lives? That, that, that we believe naively like that little boy that it was possible. What would you do if, if, if failure was not on the table? Do you realize that 87% of people allow the fear of failure to outweigh their desire to succeed because they've been convinced by the evidence, by being practical, by being logical, by being realistic. I did that. Leslie, yes. You're going to speak for corporations, yes. Leslie, do they have a college education? Yes. Do you? Wesley, you know that I don't have a college education. Leslie, are these people experienced? Yes. Are there people with PhDs and MBAs that they could choose? rather than choose you. Yes. So you don't have a college education. You have no experience. You're talking about becoming a speaker and they're going to reach over people with PhDs and MBAs and years of experience and choose you. Are you being realistic? Come on, Leslie. Come on, Leslie. You can't do this. My, my brother, <laughs> he is, he's a wonderful person. And, and, and he constantly reminded me that I, I couldn't do what I'm doing now. And, but that really wasn't the bad part. The real bad part was I convinced myself that I couldn't do it. Not only because of those things that he pointed out, being practical and realistic, but also that within myself, I didn't believe what Mike Williams, my mentor, said was possible for me. Have you ever had somebody who believed and saw something for you that you didn't see for yourself? And here's how I escaped that. I discovered that sometimes you have to believe in somebody's belief in you until your belief kicks in. So here's what I am believing for you. The goals that you right now have, the things that you have envisioned for yourself, this is a reflection, what you've done thus far and what you are engaged in doing 
It's what's possible for you right now. But there's even more. You don't even know what's in the future. Eye has not seen. Ear has not heard. If you believe in yourself, if you constantly remind yourself after every defeat, after every setback, Every time you get knocked down, I've got a saying, if life knocks you down, try and land on your back because if you can look up, you can get up. See, a lot of people, because of failure, they stop. They stop believing. Let me share something with you. You will fail your way to success. Yes. Eight out of 10 millionaires have been financially bankrupt. You will fail your way to success. It doesn't matter how many times you fail. It doesn't matter how many times people tell you that you can't do it. It doesn't matter if you don't have a dime in the bank. You will fail your way to success. What's very important is you, you're believing in yourself. You're constantly saying somehow, some way I'm going to make it. I remember a lady out of Detroit, Michigan. They call her Martha Jean the Queen. And she had a motivational message she gave all the time on the radio. And the question she would ask was, do you really want to win? Mm, do you really want to win? And she said, if you really want to win in life, You've got to believe in yourself when no one else does. You've got to believe in yourself. See, it's easy to believe in yourself and to have faith if you have a good bill of health, if your relationship is working out fine, if you have money in the bank, if you have a secure job, if your mortgage note is paid current, if the children are acting like they have good sis. <laughs> it is, it's easy. If you go to a doctor, they say, oh, you're doing real good. I'll see you next year. It's easy to have faith then. Let, let me tell you when, when it's really tough to have faith. When you lose your job, when you lose your retirement, when you go to the doctor and they look at you and say, you have cancer. Cancer is the most feared word in seven different languages. That's when it's tough to have faith then. And that's when you need to call on your faith then. They said faith is the oil that, that takes the friction out of living. That's when you need to believe in yourself then and judge not according to appearances and say to yourself, it's possible. It's possible. I can make it. It's possible. I'm going to get through this. It's possible. I'm not going to allow this to get the best of me. Yeah. I don't know what you're up against. I don't know what you're facing, but here's what I do know. You've got something special. You've got greatness in you. And I know it's possible that you can live your dream.